Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at basics of accounting for income taxes. What is the big idea? Corporations will have to follow basically two sets of rules when they are preparing their taxes versus when we are when they are preparing their financial statements for gap purposes. For the IRS rules, when they fill out the 1120C, they'll gonna have to follow the IRS code, the Internal Revenue Code. And when they prepare their financial statements for the investors, they have to follow GAAP, generally accepted accounting principle. And as a result, the way we account for income, the way we account for revenues, the way we account for deduction, the way we account for expenses, which is basically the same deductions and expenses are the same, is differently between GAAP and IRS. Remember, the IRS, the purpose is to tax you. For GAAP purposes, the purpose is to provide relevant information to the investors and users. Therefore, we're going to be following two sets of rules. For the IRS, you're going to have to compute something called taxable income. And please pay attention to the terminology. Taxable income is an IRS language. So on the exam, when I refer to taxable income, it means we are dealing with an IRS number. Then based on the taxable income, we multiply this by a rate and we come up with income taxes payable. Again, income taxes payable is IRS language. Income taxes payable is how much you pay, what's the check that you have to write to the IRS? What's the amount of money you send to the IRS? This is the, the you complete this on 1120C. For GAAP purposes, for generally accepted accounting principle, you are targeting investors and creditors, therefore you follow GAAP. The rules are different. Then you compute something called Pre-tax financial income, pre-tax financial income, or simply put, financial income is a gap terminology. And based on the financial income, you will arrive to your income tax expense. You have to be aware of the rules, the, uh, the terminology, because it's, it's different in a sense that you have to know whether you are being asked to compute taxable income or income tax expense or income taxes payable. They're, they're different things. So the first thing, be, be familiar with the terminology. So why would there be any difference between GAAP and IRS? The list is endless. Let me show you a few examples, which we'll discuss them much, much more in details. Depreciation. The way you book depreciation for tax purposes, for example, on line 18 here, is different than the way you, you book depreciation for, for GAAP purposes. So if you have depreciation here based on selling general and administrative, the way you book depreciation is different. Therefore, it's going to give you a different financial income than taxable income. They will be different. The way you account for warranties, for example, remember for GAAP, you can accrue warranties. You can account for the expense before it occurs. For IRS, you cannot accrue a warranty. Same with bad debt expense. For GAAP, you estimate bad debt expense. For IRS, you have to use the direct method. Two different methods, long-term construction revenue, prepaid expenses, so on and so forth. There's a, a lot of rules that differ between how you account for the IRS income, taxable income, and how you account for GAAP financial income. And as a result, you're going to have differences in taxable income and financial income. As a result, you're going to have to account for those differences under the third tax asset and the third tax liabilities. Now, the best way is to look at an example to illustrate this concept. Although this example is simple, you may think it's challenging, but make sure you follow step by step because I'm only changing one thing. I'm dealing with one difference, which is the third tax liability. I just told you this because just so I want you to focus. So Adam Company reported revenues of 130000 and expenses of 60000 in each of the following three years. For tax purposes, Adam reported the same expenses to the IRS in each of the of the year. So we have a three-year company. As far as expenses, no difference between GAAP and IRS. However, Adam reported taxable revenue of 100,000 in year X0, 150 in year X1, and 140 in year X2. For GAAP, they reported all the years at what is 130,000. So Here's the gap numbers. Here's the gap financial statement. Revenues of 130, expenses of 60, financial income of 70,000. 70,000 times 20%. Well, don't worry about this. Income tax expense is 14. Ignore the rate. Same thing for year 
x1 same thing for year x2 total 390 in revenues over the three years expenses 280 180 and fi pre-tax financial income to 10 and income tax expense total of 42. for gap purposes the revenue that they reported for year x0 was not 130 was 100,000. why because the way irs want you to report revenue is based on cash so if you receive the cash you have revenue therefore in year x0 they received one hundred thousand dollar in cash therefore they credited revenue one hundred thousand in total they debited cash one hundred thousand so what they did what did they do for gap purposes they reported one hundred and thirty thousand well the only explanation i can tell you is there was an accrual of thirty thousand so simply put for gap they reported revenue of 130 of which 100 was in cash which we know from the tax from the tax record and the 30,000 must be an account receivable so that's why I just want to show you the difference now the expenses are the same for both companies if you notice over a three-year period the total revenue was 390 because it was just a temporary difference because eventually eventually the customers will pay their bill will pay the 30,000 and as a result this 30,000 becomes taxable for IRS so eventually it would reverse and that's why it's called it's it's going to reverse that's why we're going to say the first tax asset and the third tax liabilities will will reverse but here's what we need to do and by the way this is not income tax expense this is income taxes payable because remember the tax language i kept this on purpose i wanted to change it to remind you that income tax expense is not the same thing as income taxes payable income taxes payable is an irs language now what we have to do is we have to account for the difference between what we report as income tax expense for gap and an income tax expense for irs or income taxes payable for irs and notice the difference in year one is six thousand so we'll take 14 minus eight the difference in year two is negative two thousand the difference in year i'm sorry negative four negative four thousand and the difference in year three or x2 is negative 2000 when you net out the differences plus six minus four plus six minus four minus two the net difference is zero so just make sure you make a note of this because we're gonna be looking at the differences and account for them on the next slide before we proceed to the next slide most likely if you are viewing this recording it's because you are either an accounting student or a cpa candidate either or please visit farhatlectures.com for additional resources. I don't replace your CPA review course. You can keep it. I provide you with additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true false exercises. That's going to help you with your intermediate accounting courses, as well as other courses and your CPA exam. My material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, or any other CPA course you are taking. So it's easy to follow. I give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. Share it with others. It helps me tremendously. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And I started a CPA exam support group on GroupMe. Please join us. I, I will be there as well as other CPA candidate. So let's examine the difference between the income tax expense, which is GAP, and income taxes payable IRS. And as I just mentioned in the prior slide, there's a difference of 6,000 and X0, 4,000 negative and X1 and negative 2,000. As a result, over three years, the difference is negative. Now we need to know why. Why did that happen? Why do we have a difference? Well, the difference is, if you remember, for gap, we had an additional 30,000 included in income. This 30,000 not taxable was not taxable in year X0. Why not? Because the customer did not pay it. They bought the product, but they did not pay it. Therefore, it's not taxable. As a result, we need to tell the users of the financial statement, okay, we need to tell them, yes, we are paying $8,000 this year, but please pay attention. In future years, customers will pay us an additional 30,000 and we, we are responsible for paying 20% taxes. Therefore, we have an additional tax bill of 6,000. This is what we're saying. We're telling the users that in future years, we're going to have additional tax bill. Not now, in future years. Why? Because we have an account receivable on the books that's not on the IRS. 
on the IRS on the tax record yet. So we must account for those temporary difference in the financial statement. Now this 6,000 is a liability. Specifically, we're gonna call it a deferred tax liability. It means in the future, we are responsible for an additional 6,000 based on the receivable that we have on the books for financial accounting. This is what we're saying. Therefore, what we do is we create a T account telling, I'm gonna abbreviate D2L, telling the users of the financial statement please pay attention we have an additional six thousand in the future which is not bad because we're going to be receiving cash in year x2 notice here what happened to this what happened to this liability the difference reversed in year x1 which is year two which is this is year two in year two or x1 what happened is we paid the irs eighteen thousand, but our income tax expense was only 14. why well, it appears that we are starting to receive the money from the customers. As we receive the money from the customers, we have more in taxes to pay, but for gap purposes, we already accounted for that account receivable in year X zero. So our DTL is reduced by four. Then in year X two, in year X two, also we have a negative difference of 2000. Well, why? Because the customer kept paying and as the customer paid, we have to send more money to the IRS. And why don't we account for this under gap when the customer paid? Because we already accounted for it in year X zero when it was an account receivable. Therefore, by year three, the deferred tax liability is fully reversed. And we'll talk about what fully reversed is in a moment. But let us let me show you how things are reported on the financial statement. For year X zero, under liabilities, we're going to have a deferred tax liability of 6,000, which is this number here, the difference. It means in the future we have to pay, we are responsible for an, for an additional $6,000. Income tax is payable. This is the money that we're going to have to send to the IRS, $8,000. Our income tax expense is $14,000. Now, this is no coincidence. The $14,000 is composed of two numbers. We have to pay the IRS the current portion because... You have to know the current portion. The current portion of the taxes is 8,000. We have to pay to the IRS. And we, we have 6,000 deferred. Deferred means we have to pay in the future. So your income tax expense is always composed of two components, a current portion, which represent your income taxes payable, and a deferred portion. Now the deferred portion here happens to be a liability or increase in liability. Sometimes the deferred portion could be an increase in deferred taxed asset, which could which could decrease your income tax expense. I know I'm jumping the gun now, but I just want to make you aware that you could have a deferred tax liability, an increase in that, a decrease in that, an increase in, in deferred tax asset, and a decrease in deferred tax asset. Don't worry, we'll discuss this later on. But the point is your income tax expense has two components, a current and a long term, and we'll discuss this later on. So why are we doing all of this? We have to go through all this problem because we had a temporary difference. What is a temporary difference? It's a difference between the tax basis of an asset or a liability as it's reported and the financial statement that would result in a future taxable amount in future years. What does that mean? What does the statement mean? Is It means per books, per gap. For the purpose of this example, we had an account receivable of 30000 Per tax return, we cannot account for the account receivable because we don't have account receivable. We only we only have taxes when we receive the cash. So as a result of this difference, we have a deferred tax liability. We have a taxable amount in the future. Now, the, the temporary difference could result in a deductible amount. Deductible amount means you're going to have more tax savings in the future rather than a tax liability. Therefore, the temporary difference could could result in deferred tax liability d2l represent an increases in taxes in future years this is the example that we saw as a result of a taxable temporary difference existing at the end of the year or the temporary difference could result in a deferred tax asset which is the opposite represent the increases in taxes refundable or saved so sometimes the difference could result in a future tax savings which will which will see that later on in a different example where we have a deferred tax asset that exists at the end of the current year. Let's go back and look at this full picture and see what happened in year X1 and X2. Because in X0, basically, we know that we're going to be receiving $30,000 in cash. In year X1, we received the $20,000. In year X2, we received the $10,000. Now, as you receive this money, it becomes taxable. It becomes taxable. So let's take a look at how we prepare the journal entry for year X0. 
Listen to me carefully. This is how you prepare the journal entries. The first thing you figure out in the journal entry is what is my income tax payable? How much do I have to pay the IRS? Well, that's basically a function of your taxable income. Notice the language is very specific times the rate. And we already did this on slide two. And taxable income times the rate gave us $8,000 of IRS IRS bill. So we credit income taxes payable 8,000. The next thing we figure out is whether we have an income deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability, an increase or a decrease. Well, we have a deferred tax liability. The, the prior balance was zero and now we book 6,000. Therefore, we credit deferred tax liability 6,000. Now we compute our income tax expense. What is our income tax expense? Our income tax expense is a function of how much you're paying now and what's the changes in the deferred tax liability? Well, income tax expense now is a plug. Yes, it's a plug. Simply, it's a plug. Well, you have two credits of 14. The debit must be 14. But you, you need to understand why. You need to understand why. So I'm writing a check for 8000 This is part of my income tax expense. And in the future, I'm going to have to write another check for 6000 Therefore, my income tax expense for this year is 14000 Simply put, if your deferred tax liability increases, you have a credit, how does it affect your income tax expense? Well, if, you're, if your deferred tax liability went up on the credit, it's going to increase your income tax expense. So as, as your deferred tax liability went up, you're saying I'm responsible for more taxes. You have to write this as taxes, like you are accruing an expense. You credit a liability, you debit the related expense. You are accruing an expense because you're saying, I'm going to have to be responsible for that 6000 Once again, where that 6000 came from? Well, I have a receivable on the books. Eventually, I'm going to be receiving the money. As a result, I have to pay 20% on it. As a result, I'm responsible for 6000 So this is X0, year X0. So let's take a look at what happened in year X1 and year X1 when I actually start to receive the 20000 When I receive the 20000 now I have to write a check to the IRS. My taxable income becomes 18. If you don't know where that 18,000 coming from, scroll back or pause and go back and see where that taxable income coming from. So I have to pay, I have to write a check to the IRS by for 18,000. My income tax is payable is 18,000. Now what happened, the check I'm writing is reducing my, my deferred tax liability. Why? Because now I receive this 20,000, 20,000 times 20%. Now I reduce my liability by 4,000 because I receive the money and I'm paying the cash for it. Therefore, my liability goes down. Now, if you have a liability called the third tax liability and it's going down and the corresponding account is when you created this liability is income tax expense. If this is going down with a debit, what's happening, what's happening to your income tax expense? If this is a debit, this must be a credit. It means your income tax expense is going down. Therefore, you're going to debit the third tax liability because now you received 20,000, you paid the bill, your liability is going down. As a result for that year, your income tax expense will go down as well. So as your deferred tax liability goes down, your income tax expense goes down. Notice we credited income tax payable 18,000 my liability went down by four and this becomes a plug but I'm telling you what the plug is you paid 18,000 of that amount 4,000 is a liability therefore I need to reduce my expense by that 4,000 now if I look at my T account this was x0 and this is x1 I still have a liability of 2,000 and this is when I would receive the 10,000 now I receive the $10,000 my Income tax is payable. I have to write a check to the IRS for 16000 That's the first thing you do. Income tax is payable, 16. My, my liability went down. My deferred tax liability went down by 2000 Why? Because if I receive the money, I have to pay 20% taxes on it. I satisfied that liability that I set up initially. Remember, I had 6000 initially, went down by 4x1. Now I paid the remaining 2000 went down by 2 my deferred tax liability went down to zero. Remember, when defer my, my deferred tax liability goes down, it reduces my income tax expense. Now, my income tax expense is 16 minus 2. 16 minus 2,000 is 14,000. Remember, my income tax expense is a function of my current portion of the taxes and the deferred. Now, the deferred is going down, not going up. Therefore, I'm paying 16, of which 2,000, I'm reducing my deferred. Therefore, my current, my income tax expense, my total income tax expense, is 14 
thousand. So this is what happened to my deferred tax liability after everything is reversed. It means it went down to zero. Now this is how things will show on the balance sheet on the financial statements. For X zero, I had eight thousand of income taxes payable and the third tax liability of six. Eight plus six equal to fourteen thousand, and this is my income tax expense. In year X one, my income taxes payable was eighteen. And my liability went down from six to two. So 18 minus four is 14,000. And this is my income tax expense for year two. For year three, my income tax is payable is 16. And my liability went from 2000 to zero. So it went down by two. Eight, uh, 16 minus two equal to 14,000. So notice as my liability goes down, I'm deducting it from my expense. When my liability went up from zero to six, I took eight plus six, gave me the 14,000 in year X zero, which is year one. So this is X zero, X one, and X two. What should you do? This is just an introductory session. Um, about this topic. I'm going to have future sessions, but you, you should go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, look at additional resources. This topic is challenging. I'll try to simplify it, demystify it as much as I can. Don't shortchange yourself. Whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, invest in yourself. Give me a try. I can help you do better. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.